gentlemen from the famous Hollywood Legion Stadium. And here we are, ready to bring you another one of these famous main events of ours. And believe me, we have a very extra special one for you tonight. In a recent set to here, the great Bolo gave a very bad time to Shander Zabo, a former world's champion and a very popular wrestler here in Southern California. And the great Bolo was aided and abetted by his manager and ex-wrestler named Louis Miller. The result was that Zabo hurled a challenge and a big one. He said he would wrestle both of these men, not only the great Bolo, but his manager as well, Louis Miller, and would uh, throw them both inside of one hour. Now we'll get further details of it from the ring because I think we're just about set to go with the wrestlers in the ring. And our good friend, that former world's heavyweight wrestling champion himself, Jules Strongbow, is in there, set to make the introductions. Later, of course, Jules will join us here at ringside for his interesting between falls comments about wrestling and about the wrestlers that we're going to watch this evening. So here we are, all set to go, and here is Jules. This is your main event of the evening, a special challenge match. would like to give you the rules of this match. Chandor Zabo has challenged both the great Bolo and his manager and agrees to beat them both within one hour time limit or forfeit the match. Should either one of the great Bolo or Louis Miller pin Chandor Zabo, then the match is automatically over since he agrees to beat both of them. If he fails to beat both of them, but does beat one of them, Inside of an hour, he will lose the match inasmuch as he did not defeat both men. This challenge match is also on a winner-take-all basis. Introducing first, on my left, Weighing 219 pounds, the man who was three times world's heavyweight wrestling champion from Santa Monica, California, the challenger, Chandar Zabo. <laughs> On my right, the two men he must defeat to win this match this evening. First, weighing 195 pounds, the manager, Louis Miller. Weighing 235 pounds, the man he manages, the unknown, the great Bolo. Pete Merringer will referee this challenge match. Pete Merringer, in a moment, will give the instructions once again to these same three wrestlers that you've had explained to you by Jules Strombo, and of course, a further explanation of the rules of the state of California. Jules Strombo is now going to flip a disc which will determine which one of these two men will uh, be the first to meet Chandra Zabo. So we watch for the disc, see which way it comes down. And it is, is it Louis Miller? Miller is chosen, I think, to uh, wrestle first. Louis Miller is going to wrestle first. But there seems to be some dispute. And Miller is, uh, well, he was a little hesitant, and I can understand why to tangle with the uh, former world's heavyweight champion. Wait a minute, we're going to have a further explanation, and um, Jules Strombo is asking that the microphone be lowered so that he can make a further explanation of the rules. So we'll listen to that now. In the flip of the disc, to see which one Shandar Zabo would take on first, he will take on Louis Miller, the manager first. Now again, an explanation of the rules. And uh, again, the great Polo and Louis Miller are as loquacious as they were the last time that these met. And perhaps they'll get everything uh, settled here, but I don't know. Now, I think you understand that Zabo must pin both these men within the one-hour time limit allowed for this match. If he doesn't, he is lost, and he forfeits his entire purse. Because this is a winner-take-all on the financial settlement of the purse here. Now, Louis Miller is arguing up in the corner here again with the great Bolo. And uh, Miller, uh, well, I think, wants, uh, <laughs> he wants the great Bolo to wrestle first to wear him down a little bit. But finally, the great Bolo convinces him that he's the man for the job to get in there first. And I think this probably pleases Zabo a great bit because in the uh, 
Last meeting, Louis Miller threw a few punches, got a little bit rough with Zabo, and probably helped him in his loss to uh, the great Bolo. One that was a very unpopular loss, I might point out. So we're underway here. Miller is an ex-wrestler, though I don't know just in what shape he is at the moment. We'll soon know, because anybody who works with Zabo a little while indicates pretty clearly whether he's in shape or not. Arm tug takedown, and Miller hurries to the ropes. He wants no part of this. Of course, you can obviously see that Louis Miller and the great Bolo can gain just by stalling for if nothing else. Because if they can last it out without being pinned, wait a minute, Miller grabs a toehold here. <laughs> now, wait a minute, the count went to five. I thought it may have gone to five, but it did not. Break was ordered. And some of the fans are shouting that the break did not come quite fast. Should be a disqualification, but nonetheless, they go right on wrestling. So apparently, Pete Marringer ruled that the break was uh, underway there at the count of five. Question about the chin lock. Miller tries for a leg snatch, and he gets nowhere with it. Will break anything. Those clubbing hammer blows there to the rabbit puncher. Miller starts with his first real hold, takes side headlock, and the fans shout that he's pulling hair. And does a takedown with a little tug in the hair. Great Bolo shouting instructions all the while here. And the ropes, they got a break. Pete Barringer, an ex-wrestler himself, an Olympic champion in wrestling, by the way, and an All-American football player at the University of Kansas, had to put on his own headlock to break it up. Takes a forward quarter, Nelson. Marriage check says that the quarter Nelson is across the chin, not on the throat, so everything is all right here. Double rares back. Great Bolo, as you can see, was in his corner, and he is in Miller's corner. Miller is reversed here with the head scissors. Bolo is seated in the front row. But there's always a chance that he may get over anxious and move into the ring. And Miller, of course, did the same thing. A foot in the face, and Miller lost his hold. Double chin locks Miller. Miller, a smaller man here, claims that he holds a win over Zabo at one of the arenas in Southern California. There's a break. Look out, the great Bolo is slipping up to the edge of the ring. Shouting something to the great Bolo all the while there. Uh, working toward a top wrist lock there. Finally gets his key locked and is trying to pull hair and does pull hair with the top wrist lock at the same time for a takedown. Pete Marringer questions that. Can't keep it going. Now he can with that head scissors. And Miller is very happy for the ropes. Miller trying to aim for anything he can get away with. And now he takes a look at Zabo. And uh, yes, sir, very happy to lean through the ropes once more. Matter of fact, he may leave everything.
There's a count going on, and some of the fans are taking up the count here in unison at the same time. Well, there's a punishing arm lock as five minutes have gone by. Five minutes in our hour time limit, and no fall is yet. Remember, Zabo must pin both Miller and the great Bolo in order to win the full purse here because it's winner take all on the money in this challenge match. Marringer walking behind Zabo. He saw Miller pull hair, and I think that Marringer detected it. Zabo will decide that lock. He won't be allowed that either. Miller threw one punch in there. I don't know if he wants to throw any more or not. Not now. Judo chop. Look at Zabo go to work. And Miller is in big trouble. Well, you can't get knocked down if you're already down, says Miller. about the punches but they were good clean judo chops Lawrence Quarter Nelson Miller again to the ropes wait a minute look out Polo is getting up here to throw a punch Dabo doesn't know it perhaps but he's in trouble as far as the Polo is concerned and Pete Marringer has his hands full to separate these boys tonight Warns the great pay down in the seats. Top headlock. Doubles fan shouting choke. Pete Marringer checking. That's enough for Miller. And here's Zabo with his famous holes. The Hackenschmidt toe hole. And Bolo starts to come up to get into the ring. Only to be warned back. Ten locks. Sock here. And Miller again to pulling hair. It helped him get a takedown. He denies everything. Miller wants to use the rope for added leverage, and of course he won't be allowed that either. Crowd is becoming more and more infuriated with Louis Miller, the manager, and great Bolo the wrestler. Double comes up top side, breaks the hold, takes key lock, top wrist lock here. Double working hard with the wrist lock. Nine minutes have gone by in our one-hour time limit, and Zabo still doesn't have the first fall. Remember, if he loses to either man, he has lost the match because he has promised to beat both of them in the one-hour time limit. In other words, he's going to pin both of them within one hour. Now Miller starts to work topside and starts uh, calling the referee, watch the shoulders. Zabo, a big, strong man and hard to handle, comes topside himself. Almost could work the suplex. This is such a hurry to get out of there. Zabo had a chance for the suplex. Louis Miller with a quick conference with the great Bolo. And Zabo has it for him inside there. Ten minutes gone by now. Fifty minutes left, and Zabo still looking for the first ball. 
He's got to throw Louis Miller first, then he'll have a short rest period, then he will wrestle the great Polo, and he must throw him also before the remaining 50 minutes of our time limit go by. Wait a minute, Miller, a little punch on the break. Here comes Zabo. He's got the wound up to throw. Miller's through the ropes. Look out. Zabo's ready to take them both one at the same time. See if he can take those double handed rabbit punches. Zabo rears back with a top headlock, but he took him when the break was ordered, so he won't be allowed to keep the hold. Another again, complaining about those fists. Down he goes once more. Long conference here at ringside. Pete Barringer explains they're all judo chops and they're perfectly okay. Headlock by Zabo. Look out, Miller. Trips him up. And Zabo kicks away. And how? Forward quarter Nelson by Louis Miller. And they'll see if the small man can work into the big one. He can't very well. Look at this. Look at this. And again, that Hackenschmidt told. Zabo wants Miller back in the center of the ring. Great Bolo, maybe on his way. Miller is calling to him to come in there. Miller would like very much to have the great Bolo in the ring now. And the great Bolo keeps making motions as if he might be on his way to rescue Miller from this toehold, which Zabo does to perfection. The ringsiders are watching both the match and watching the great Bolo as he tries to slip in. Now Zabo spots him also. Once more, as Louis Miller makes it to the ropes, Zabo is trying to pull him back. And I think Miller, has, as he made his know, he has not gotten far enough under there yet. It was very close, but not yet. Out of trouble. Now Miller is loose from the hole because he got under the ropes. Great Bolo calling to Louis Miller, take your time. And of course, that's a smart thing to do. These two could just keep Zabo busy, keep him getting pinned. They've got a great opportunity here to walk right off of these because Zabo must actually pin both of them. Now, well, Miller had ideas about a judo chop, as you can see, he didn't have a chance to exercise them. Air snap by Miller. 15 minutes have gone by. Only 45 minutes left and still Louis Miller. who got just got a tap on the top of the head, however, is lasting well. The longer he lasts, the less time Zaba will have to pin the great Bolo if he should succeed in pinning Louis Miller. Moves into a side headlock. Watch into the ropes. And the great Bolo once again starting to move up to the edge of the ring. We're keeping an eye on him. And of course our cameraman will be alert to cover him should he arrive in here for any extracurricular activities. Zabo with a suplex. There it is. 
This may be the end of Louis Miller. The suplex wears him out. A lock feel this time. Double topside. One, two, and three. Double's pin the first man. The great Bolo rushes in to go to work on him right away. There is to be a rest period, however. He can't start wrestling him immediately. Up goes Zabo's hand as he takes the first fall. Great ball, old Louis Miller complain about everything, but brother, when you get that suplex, you're in real trouble. There'll still be a lot of time for Zabo to wrestle the great ball. Let's get the time officially here from Joel Strongbow. In the time of 15 minutes, 9 seconds, Shandar Zabo was able to fulfill half of his challenge match. They're still complaining. Louis Miller and the great Bolo. Well, Louis Lou used up a little more than uh, one-fourth of the time. According to the agreement, Shandar Zabo is allowed a three-minute rest period. I'll get Joe Strombo down here because it'll be very interesting to hear what he has to say about the progress of the match up to now. A most unusual match indeed. Bolo and uh, Louis Miller complain. And, com <laughs> well, they should complain because they're in trouble. The fans are applauding Zabo. And I've just signaled to Jules to come on down here because he's Mr. Wrestling and he knows this sport from A to Z, believe me. And I know you're going to be interested just as I am in what he has to say about it. Well, it just goes to show you, Jules, the suplex is the answer to a lot of troubles. Well, the suplex is the answer to a lot of troubles, too, but these <laughs> boys are giving Shonda a lot of trouble. They all agreed that if he was able to defeat the first one he took on, that they would allow him a three-minute rest period. But uh, I don't think they thought that uh, he'd ever get to that second <laughs> one because the way Miller and Bolo figured it, why Bolo would take him on first. But oh. uh, that's the reason they were arguing, even with the flip of the disc there. When Miller was supposed to go in first, why they both argued that they meant it to be the other way, that the white, that uh, Bolo would take him oh, on first. Oh, okay. They wanted to change their minds in a hurry after they saw what the disc looked so, like, huh? Uh, at the time they agreed to that, they figured they would be able to talk Bolo into going in first, which they figured he would defeat Zabo and wouldn't be able to come back then. But now then that uh, Zabo defeated the man, why they don't want to give the three-minute rest period now. <laughs> That's why Bolo rushed into the ring there immediately then. Huh? That's right. He was trying to make an exact continuation of the match right there. Incidentally, uh, uh, Zabo, uh, this three minutes is, uh, uh, is pretty necessary to him. In fact, he's, he's giving this three minutes away. This is counting elapsed time that's, on him oh, now. Oh, that's right. See? Sure, it's part of the so one hour. it's counting elapsed time, but still he does need that little breather because uh, he's taking this Bolo on. He's got to have a chance to kindly recuperate just a little you know he doesn't want to recuperate too much that's the reason he didn't ask for more than three minutes I don't I don't mean he don't want to recuperate too much but I mean he doesn't wait too long yeah. to lose his second win that's see? right that's right in other words if he can wait just the right amount why then he will have a little advantage over Bolo because Bolo will be starting out and he'll have to get his second win well now it's a little less than 45 minutes it'll be about uh, a little less than 40 minutes when they start there'll be a remaining time in the match that's about right yeah well, I do say this for Louis, though he hasn't wrestled much later, uh, lately, and a much smaller man, he kept Zabo busy for a while. Well, now, they, they, uh, he says he hasn't, but evidently he and the great <laughs> Bolo have been working out some together yeah. because a man that can't go in and wrestle as hard as he wrestled, uh, see, he, he, he could have took it easy, but instead of that, he stayed after Zabo. I think they figured in the corner when they were talking over that his best bet was to... Uh, rush Zabo and wear him out as much as possible yeah. so that when Bolo was fresh, he'd have that advantage. It looks yeah. like the bell man's ready to go here, Bill. Yes, indeed. I think we're ready. Thank you, Jules, very much. Jules Strong will be back, of course, after the match ends. Sensational in his appearance a few times that we've had him here. Takes a top headlock, and he may have pulled hair in there. First takedown goes to the great Bolo. It's exactly 40 minutes left now in the time limit. Great ball over the side headlock. Double to the face lock here. Tries to reverse. Starts his move. Maybe on his way. 
That's to stop him because he's doing this to a tremendously strong man. And they're pulling the hair. Bolo denies it all. He waited till the referee was watching Bolo's own shoulders. Then he pulled hair and got Zabo reversed back onto his back again. Up again comes Zabo in a counter move. Moving, moving, moving. And there's that Bolo pulling hair and losing it now as referee Pete Ferringer spots it. Top headlock by Thunder Zabo and Bolo hurries to the ropes. He doesn't like it a bit. Bolo leg snatches. He won't be allowed to keep that. And look at that Pete Marringer handle him. Wait a minute. Pete Marringer doesn't frighten very easily. And though Bolo's a bigger man, he better be careful. He gets find up to find himself with his hands full of trouble right here. Bolo looks to his corner to get a word of instruction from Louis Miller. Once again, try for an arm lock. And Bolo started, now pulls hair, first choke. Now goes back to the throat again, keeps his arm lock. Zabo takes the top headlock on the great Bolo, and the Bolo hurries into those ropes again. One thing he and Louie have certainly agreed upon, get to the ropes and you're in trouble. A judo chop to the back of the neck. Not allowed, of course. And Pete Marringer has to caution Chandra Zabo about that. So Zabo chops, which is all right now, since they're not uh, in the ropes. They lock up tight, but off balance. forearm smashing and Zabo again lays on with that judo chop he's certainly becoming an expert with that particular offensive weapon Five minutes have gone by. 35 minutes left. Zabo must pin the great bolo in the 35 minutes or lose it. Well, that gets out of a hole, and there's a tackle. Here comes Zabo. Everybody, look out. Great bolo trying to hide behind Ref Erringer. Billy Miller, I think, is signaling the great bolo to uh, throw some punches. and wraps the elbow in the small of the back at the same time. Here's something the bowler doesn't like and a little leg kick and he is taken down. <laughs> Bolo starts to pull trunks. Bolo wants anything to get out of trouble here. Zabo keeps the forward quarter Nelson, and Bolo now starts to work on the ropes. Zabo goes to an arm lock. And if he can bear down enough on that left arm, Bolo might be pinned right here and now. Louis Miller is trying to help out. Again, 
and hooking the ropes with one leg. Let's see if he's there enough. He is enough over the ropes that Zabba's is going to lose the arm lock. again. Watch the break. Watch it. Bravo appears to be hurt as Polo goes to work on him. Pete Marringer has to get in and help rescue Zabo from a very bad situation. Look out, Zabo is groggy. Staggered back to his own corner there. The great Bolo again starts to pound away with these rabbit punches. And Zabo sags into his own corner in real trouble. The worst trouble he's been in by far tonight. And look at the struggle that Pete Merringer has to hold the great Bolo off. Bolo is complaining because the referee won't allow him to pursue Zabo. However, under the rules, when Zabo is in the ropes like that, off balance, they cannot continue to wrestle. Zabo trying to protect himself. Great Bolo chopping away. And you can see Zabo very, very close here to being pinned right now. Staggers over here, look out very close to Louis Miller. But Miller makes no move to help the great bowler, apparently figuring the great bowler can handle the situation from here on. Zabo's pulling on the mask. The mask worn by the great bolo. Started to pull on that mask. But you can see Zabo has suddenly weakened. But got his second win for that chop in there. And this may save him for the moment. Takes a top headlock. Off balance again. So Zabo drops a punch in there to floor the great Bolo momentarily. Bolo comes out with those fists, walks right into a leg snatch, and into the Hackenschmidt. This punishing toehold. Now what's Zabo going to work on? The great Bolo's left leg. Pete Marringer checking and gets a two count on the great bolo and keeps telling Zabo there is no submission as yet. So Zabo winds up that left leg once more. There it goes. Zabo comes up off the shoulders. Bolo still shaking his head. No, he will not submit. Oh, it's plenty punishing. Look out. Almost got a three count. Very close to a three count. Thirty minutes gone. We're halfway through the one hour time limit. And at the moment, things look encouraging for Zabo because he threw Louis Miller. Fifteen minutes and twelve seconds. And he has plenty of time yet to try to pin the great Bolo. One and a two count again. Double with the toe hold. Ask the referee again. Check him. See if he's ready to submit. And Pete Marringer keeps saying no. He says no. He says no. The double winds it up again with the Hackenschmidt toe hold and back on his shoulders for one goes the great ball. One again. It's so intense, of course, that the inclination is just to lie back and fight the pain and not worry about your shoulders, but he can't do that. No matter whether his shoulders are being pressed down or not, if they touch the canvas for a three count, he has lost the fall. And, of course, on a winner-take-all basis, he's lost the money, too, because the entire purse in this main event tonight will go to the winner. If Zabo can't pin both men, he's already pinned one. If he can't pin both of them within the hour, he loses. There's a one and a two count again.
Louis Miller's complaining because the great Bolo, he says, won't listen to me. There's a one and a two, and again, the Bolo is in big, big trouble here. Double pours it on. Now, uh, let's see. We may we may have a submission coming here. Bolo gets back down for that two count again. And Louis Miller frantically tries to give orders from the ringside. And the great Bolo pays no attention. And if Bolo does get out of this hole, he's going to have a very bad left leg to worry about for a while. himself out of the hole. That did it. Polo very happy to get into a neutral corner here for a moment. Polo begs for mercy and wants anything. Wants a chance to limber up that left leg. Now, conference. Great Polo being told what to do by Louis Miller. Use the fist. Look at Zabo. Fake beautifully as if he were going for a headlock. Comes up with a leg snatch again. He's got that left leg. But he has to lose the hold, of course, since they're off balance in the rope. In the referee's hold now. That wrist lock on the arm, enough for a takedown. Oh, it's a head scissors for the great Bolo. Zabo again may be working for his Hackenschmidt toehold. And Bolo wants some help. Zabo has it. He's got the Hackenschmidt again. Right back on that left leg. Oh, Zabo pours it on, and here's Louis Miller wanting it. <laughs> Louis Miller is uh, leaving his position. I don't know. What, he seems to be mad about something. He's gone up the aisle. Louis Miller disgusted with a great bolo and started to move up the aisle, but now he starts to come back once again to the ringside corner here. Because Bolo won't listen to the instructions, Bolo pulls hair to spoil the hold. Louis Miller is telling the great bowler he's going to leave. He's going to go to the dressing room if the great bowler won't pay attention to him. He says, I won't stay here if you're not going to pay attention to what I tell you. Great ball all. The Zabo has that bad left leg of the ball holds. The hole moves down and it's not yet on the throat, but it's very close. Zabo is losing the hold that he had, and the ball is headlock may or may not be on the throat. Pete Marringer keeps checking and says it is not. As he tries to watch now, Bolo rocks it back and forth. You realize, of course, the great Bolo doesn't have to pin Zabo to win here tonight. All he has to do is just outlast him for about 25 more minutes. And then he will have won the match because Zabo agreed to throw both men to pin them both within the hour. He pinned one, the manager, Louis Miller, as a result of a wild set to here in a recent match between the great Bolo and Zabo. He challenged both Bolo and Louis Miller because Miller got into the ring and gave some help that may or may not have given uh, the great ball away victory over Zabo. 
There's that top headlock again, and again it seems to bother Zabo, and he can't keep his hold. Zabo's being told to break. Count of ten started here as Pete Marringer tries to hold off the great Bolo. There he is with that hold again, going down on the throat. The Zombo fans become a little bit frantic about it. A rotary. And again, look out, Bolo's on top. This could be it. One, two, not three, only two. Zombo got away and Judo chopped. And how? Zabo is weak, but he's still battling it out. He knows he has to have another fall here. Look at that judo chop on the neck. Look at this Zabo pour it on. Here's a suplex. A tremendously big man, the great Bolo, tossed with a suplex almost like a child by Shander Zabo. Wants to do it again. Look out. Louis Miller has grabbed Zabo's leg. And is trying to get into the ring. On top for one and two and three. The Bolo has pinned Zabo. But Miller grabbed Zabo's leg and tripped him up. And so I think we're going to have some trouble here. The fans are in a wild state of excitement about this. Joe Trombo going into the ring to help maintain peace if he can. As the fans come storming down to ringside. Zabo is explaining in the background to Pete Marringer that he was pinned as a result of his being tripped by Louis Miller. So Pete Marringer still says the winners, they get it all. They're going to take them up the aisle right now. They're starting a count here. Wait a minute. Pete Marger reversed his ruling and says that Zabo is now the winner. He had found out. He apparently ruled that since there had been a trip there, that the great Bolo had to come back and wrestle. He did not do so. And a count in which the crowd joined in has just gone to 10. And I believe now... The fall may be given to Zabo, but we wait for an official explanation here of just exactly what happened. Let's hear from Jules Strombo. One moment, please. <clears throat> One moment, please. Your referee's decision, I have just asked him, he said he refused to allow the fall of the great Bolo because of interference of the manager. And since Bolo refused to re-enter the ring and continue the match, he awarded the match and both purses to Zabo, Thunder Zabo. I, I was a little in the dark as to what happened myself until one over and had a talk with the referee, Pete Merringer, and he explained to me that uh, he didn't see the manager pull the leg there. And... Uh, when uh, he did find out from the crowd that it had happened, he questioned both men, and then he reversed the decision of giving the fall to the great Bolo and requested that he come back in the ring and continue the match. Of course, when he counted, Bolo refused because his contention was he had won the match, uh -huh. and he saw no reason for coming back in and continuing the match, and of course it was on the advice of his manager, Louis Miller, that he went ahead. However, I will say that him going ahead... Uh, not only cost him the match, but it cost him both of their purses tonight yeah, also. This is a, a big financial loss that suffered here but just this by that little bully. a tremendous bullet. crowd here at the Hollywood Legion Stadium tonight. And uh, in fact, it's a uh, capacity crowd that is the largest crowd we've had in here in uh, some time. And we've had some real good crowds in here, but this is a capacity house. And I would say that their purses would be quite a sum of money tonight, <laughs> Bill, judging by the size of the, the crowd that's here, wouldn't you? I, I would imagine that... Uh, when the great Bolo and Louis Miller, if they've already gotten the word, and when they do get it and realize what they've lost, they're going to be very unhappy they didn't come back and at least try to last it out here. Going back over the last half of the match, the part of it to me that was the most striking was the fact that although uh, the great Bolo came in fresh, it seemed to me like that uh, Shandor Zabo was on the aggressive a big part of the time. I would say that of the time limit on the last fall, which was 22 minutes, seconds, 
that uh, Shandar Zabo had uh, the great Bolo in a bad way uh, at least half a time or more with that standing leg split of oh, his. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's of course, a... that is Zabo's favorite hole because he puts it on a little bit different to anyone else in as much as he brings the arm around and he puts the pressure on the ankle more than in the uh, leg stretch. You see what I mean? In yeah, other words, yeah. when he turns that, that toe, it's almost like in a toe hold. A lot of people, yeah. they... Uh, they think that the pressure of a toe hole no. is in the foot itself, it's in the ankle, yes. that's what always snaps. So consequently, uh, when he had uh, the great bolo in the standing leg split, why the tremendous pressure that he applies is not in the knee or down in the hips as with most fellows in a standing leg split, but the pressure that Zabo puts on is in the ankle. That's the reason the fellow was trying to reach higher all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he, he was, he's trying to turn that foot back so that all that pressure isn't on the ankle itself. As I say, about 10 minutes of the match, he had a great bolo in this standing leg split, which is his favorite hold, I would say, favorite outside of, of uh, his slammeroo. His suplex, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the giant suplex, yes. And... Uh, that is another part of it. Did you notice that uh, he uh, he did manage to bring the great Bolo over in his giant yeah, suplex, I and he had him right audience. on the verge of defeat there with it. If his manager hadn't reached through and pulled that leg, yeah, he would have. There's no doubt in my mind, but what he would have defeated the great Bolo with that giant suplex because he had him in a very bad way. Of course, Bolo and Miller both have said all along that Zabo. Was uh, the great Bolo, because oh, he had boy. a defense for it. Yeah. So that was another thing that was a little bit amazing. It was the fact that he was able to put the giant suplex on the great Bolo uh, after all of their bragging of what he couldn't do. I think I was amazed, too, that he could lift this tremendous man and throw him in the, over his shoulder with that suplex. That was a great feat of strength for a man who had worked as hard as uh, Zabo had. Well, this great Bolo weighs 235 pounds, and when you stop to think that... Uh, a man that weighs 235 pounds to exert the energy that it would take to lift him by the neck itself, which is much uh, greater than trying to give him a, a slam. Yes, In other words, if right. you uh, try to apply uh, a half Nelson in a crotch hold and lift him up in a, a body slam, or to pick up what is just commonly called a body slam, slam him to the mat, why uh, leverage there than no, you do no. uh, when you're applying the, the fact of the matter is, with a giant suplex, it's practically impossible unless you maneuver the man into an exact position of the body. And that's why Shonder Zabo has always been able to use this hole to such an advantage is that he has made such a study of the suplex that he knows exactly when he has him in that position. In other words, he knows when the leverage is just right that he can lift them up over in this giant And it's... Uh, the strain on the neck and the head and the oh. back all at the same time. <laughs> well, I'll say this. I think that, that there's nobody better in the world probably than Zabo at the suplex. Jules, we've had an interesting discussion. We've had a tremendous main event for our fine television audience out here tonight. And I just bet sometime soon Hugh Nichols, our promoter, is going to have the great Bolo and Zabo together again for us. Well, I thought it was a great match. And uh, for once, I think that the consensus of opinion of all of the people here in this great room are the same. They've right. witnessed a great match. Today. Yeah. Thank you, Jules. Thank you, Bill Wells. Jules Strombo, a great wrestler himself, the world's champion, and Mr. Wrestling, the man that knows the sport from A to Z, and we're just mighty proud and happy to have him working on the microphone with us for these main events from the famous Hollywood Legion Stadium. Well, that does it for tonight's tremendous main event. We'll be seeing you again in one week with more exciting wrestling, the kind you come to expect from this famous sports arena, the Hollywood Legion Stadium. With that, this is Bill Wells saying goodbye. Each week at this time, join us for the thrills and action of Main Event Wrestling from Hollywood Legion Stadium with Jules, Mr. Wrestling Strongbow, and Bill Welch. <laughs>